Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. <coughs> I'm here because I want to improve my English. Hopefully, that is the case with you as well. Uh, the way we do that is we learn is to is to learn few words every day and in the process expand our vocabulary and improve our English language. I've been at it for 10 days. At the end of five days, at, uh, at, at the end of the first five days, I gave the first quiz, quiz number one. And today is the time for quiz number two. Let's make a note of it. Quiz two is based on Day 6 through 10. If you have not mastered these words that I've covered in the first 10 days, make sure you go back to days 6 through 10 and, and make sure that you know these words before you, before you sit down and watch this video. Because I'm just going to go through these words that we learned in the last 5 days from day 6 through day 10 very quickly, very rapidly, one after the other. I'll just say the word and then I'll give you the meaning. And you won't have the time to think about the meaning, you'll have to know right off the bat. So pause the video as many times as you want to uh, if you have to think about the meaning. Uh, before you hear me say the, say the meaning. Okay, so let's get going. Starting with day number six. The very first word that we learned the very first word that we learned on day number six on the sixth day was surreptitious. What does it mean surreptitious? To do something surreptitiously is to do something in a very sneaky way, in a very underhanded way. In a very sneaky way. I'm not sure how to spell sneaky, but I think that's the correct way. If you're being sneaky, if you're being underhanded, you're, you're doing something where nobody's looking, you're doing it in a surreptitious manner. And the ad adverb simply would be surreptitiously. Don't confuse this word with the next word that we learned, which was Yeah, I'm messing it up already. This doesn't start with you. The word was serendipitous. And uh, if you're having, having trouble uh, reading my handwriting and figuring out what the words are, that should not be an excuse because these words should not be aliens to you. Uh, should not be alien to you. The, uh, these words should be quite familiar to you because you hope. Presumably, you have watched the videos from day 6 through day 10 where I cover it thoroughly, completely, and, uh, and, and, and when I cover some word for the very first time, I always make a point of writing the words in the capital letter. But here I'm not going to bother. Serendipitous. Uh, surreptitious and uh, serendipitous. What does serendipitous mean? Serendipitous uh, is an adjective. Something serendipitous happens when you happen to find something. Purely by serendipity. A serendipity is to find something, is to stumble upon something good, something nice, purely by chance, purely by fluke. And if, if that happens, it is called serendipity. It, this is, so the meaning is something good happens purely by chance, purely by fluke. And it's called serendipity. And uh, that, uh, that event, that occurrence is called a serendipitous occurrence. The next word we talked about was, again, a very simple word. Uh, let me erase this part here. So we have surreptitious. We had surrendipitous. And then I talked about this word, I just used it, fluke, which just means a stroke of good luck. It's a very simple word for, for, for a native, but I wanted to cover it. Fluke of nature, where people talk about, it just means uh, something that happens purely by chance. It's just a fluke. Then we talked about these three words, divine, divinity, Deity. Something divine, divine has two meanings. As an adjective, it has one meaning. 
And as a word, it has no other meaning. As an adjective, divine simply means something having to do with God or Goddess. Having to do with God or Goddess. In a colloquial term, in a colloquial term, divine has also come to mean, in a, in a daily slang language and so forth, it has also come to mean something that is extremely good, something that is perfect, something that is just uh, divine. Uh, that just means it's extremely good, it's perfect. That's just the colloquial meaning of the word. And if you do not know this word, you should know it. We learned it, we, we covered it. Uh, when did I cover this co word colloquial? I think on the day, day fourth or fifth or something. We covered it. So if you go back and watch those videos, oh, but not on the day five actually. Look at that here. If you want to learn this word thoroughly, completely, uh, go and watch the video for day five and you'll find it there. So where was I? So divine has two meanings. As an adjective, it means uh, having to do with God or goddess. It also means something that is perfect, something that is uh, extremely good. As a verb, it means to foretell. To divine something means to foretell, to prophecy, to make a prophecy, to predict future, or also simply to make a guess. It could, it could be as simple as making a guess. It also means divine. What does divinity mean? Divinity is just a noun of this thing. This div uh, divine was an adjective. The noun is divinity, which simply means having to do with God or Goddess. Well, not having to do with God or Goddess. Divinity actually means God or Goddess, which is the same as deity. Deity also means God or Goddess. <coughs> the very last word that we covered on day number six was... Epiphany. What is an epiphany? An epiphany, in, again in the colloquial terms, I shouldn't have erased that word. In a colloquial term, an epiphany is described as light bulb, light bulb going off. If you all of us have a sudden, if, you, if all of a sudden you have this realization, you just figured something out, uh, that is uh, a sudden realization, a sudden perception uh, is called an epiphany. So again, one more time, a sudden realization or sudden perception is called an epiphany. People also sometimes define the colloquial term epiphany as a eureka moment. It's a eureka, you know, I, I have it. That's an epiphany. Usually in a cartoon you see this guy with a, with a light bulb uh, all lit up on top of his head. That is an epiphany, a sudden realization. Let's move on to day number seven. Which, what words did we learn on day number seven? Well, let's find out. Lucid. What is lucid? Lucid literally means freely flowing. Freely flowing. Metaphorically, it means something that is easy to understand, easy to comprehend. One talks about a lucid argument. A lucid argument is something that is not convoluted. A convoluted argument, something convoluted, is twisted, is tangled, is complicated, is intricate. Lucid is none of that. Lucid is clear, is easy to understand, freely flowing. Hence, lucid argument. A lucid argument may not necessarily be a cogent argument. Just because something is lucid does not necessarily mean that it is cogent. What does cogent mean? Cogent means Persuasive, convincing. Lucid simply means easy to understand. So, that, like I said before, so just because something is lucid does not necessarily mean that it is cogent. You may be you may be able to understand somebody's argument, but that does not but that does not necessarily mean that they have convinced you of whatever it is that they're trying to persuade you of or convince you of. I understand what you're saying. I, I, I see where you're going, but I don't agree with you. I'm not convinced. 
I understand it, but I, I'm not convinced. I don't buy it. If that's the case, then the argument was not cogent. It wasn't convincing. It wasn't persuasive. The next word that we learned was a mood point. What is a mood point? A mood point is something that is being discussed purely for hypothetical reason, purely for purely for the purpose, purely for the sake of discussing it. It has no practical implication. Sometimes uh, uh, in the law school they talk about a mood court or a mood case where they, uh, the lawyers in, pra in pra uh, lawyers in training, they are not lawyers yet, they are being trained to be lawyers, and they go in this mock court and they discuss mood cases purely for theoretical learning purposes. It has no practical implication whatsoever. So if somebody says a mood point, but the time says that there is no point discussing it now, uh, whatever it is that, we, that, you, that, that you're talking about is over and done with. It's a mood point now. Do you understand? Uh, that's all. If you're, if you're interested in learning it a little bit in, in, in a little bit more detail with a few more examples and so forth, that's when you have to go and watch the video for day seven. Just type in Keshwani Prep dash vocab dash day seven and that, that video will pop up and you can watch it in more detail. Right now I don't have a luxury of going into detail because this is just a quick quiz, quick overview, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. The next word that we learned was deed. A deed is an action, an act. We talk about a good deed, we talk about a bad deed, and finally we talked about uh, vice and virtue. A vice is a, is a, is a bad quality. Virtue is a good quality. Honesty is a virtue, so is bravery. Bravery is a virtue. Uh, so is uh, modesty is a virtue. Vice is a bad quality. Dishonesty, arrogance, uh, whatever else you can think of. Greed. Greed is a vice. It's one thing to be driven, but uh, when you do too much of something, when it becomes excessive, and when you cross that fine line between being uh, motivated and to, to being greedy, then it becomes a vice. That, or a virtue may turn into a vice. That's all. That was the end of day number seven. Let's go to day number eight. What did we do on day eight? Ah, the very first thing we talked about on day eight was etymology. An etymology is the history of the word, is the story behind the word. Where did the word come from? Words have a story behind them, they have history behind them, and learning the etymology or the history of the word helps you remember the word. That's what etymology means. After that, we talked about this, it's not a word, it's a made up of, made up of two words. Carte blanche, which literally means carte as in piece of paper or document, blanche as in white, white as in blank. So literally it means blank piece of paper or a blank document. That's, that's the literal meaning of it, a blank piece of paper or a blank document. What does it mean metaphorically? Metaphorically it means, I'm not going to put everything down because I don't have the luxury of time of writing everything down because it's already been written, it's already been done. Again, if you want to learn it in detail, go watch the video for day 8 and of course, or presumably you've already done so because you're taking a quiz right now actually. But if you haven't, go back and if you want to learn it in detail, go back and watch the video for day 8. Carte blanche literally means, literally means a blank piece of paper, a blank document. Metaphorically, it means to give somebody an absolute authority to do whatever it is that he or she wishes to do. Question is, how do you make a connection between the two? What does this blank piece of paper have to do with giving somebody an absolute authority? And the etymology behind that is that, back in the old days, when the countries fought, when the princedom fought, uh, and when the two tribes or whatever, when they fought, the victor there was a victor and of course there was a loser there and the loser when they gave when they gave the unconditional surrender the the act of giving the unconditional surrender was to go to the victor and the victor will victor, victor will present you with a blank piece of paper and you are expected to put your signature on it and then the victor later on wrote down whatever it is that he wanted to write down and you don't even get to see it 
In other words, you're giving, hence the unconditional surrender. It is so unconditional, as a matter of fact, that you don't even know what you're putting your name for, what you're, what you're, signing, what you're signing for. It's like giving somebody a blank check. That's what it is. To, except here, we have a blank check. Here, we, here we're talking about a blank authority to do whatever it is that you want to do. Because I have written, I have given my signature on a blank piece of paper. You can write down whatever it is what you, what you want to write down. Hence, the carte blanche has come to me to give somebody an absolute authority to do as they please to you or whatever it is that they want to do. The next two words that we talked about on day number eight, the words were discrete with the two E together and discrete. They have the same pronunciation, same pronunciation, but different spelling and different meaning. Let's first talk about the two E's together, discrete. It means to be, to be careful, to be prudent in your action, in your words, but to be modest if you like. This discrete actually means discontinuous. Not continuous. Choppy. Coming in. and pieces. My handwriting is, uh, is a little off here because I'm writing in a hurry because again I'm assuming that you watched this thing being covered in more detail so you even though it may be a little bit more difficult to decipher it somebody who was looking at it for the very first time but you are not looking at this word or this meaning for the very first time as I said they're already there. So here we go I wanted to cover them because people sometimes confuse they mean to use this word and they end up using that word in their writing and vice versa. And the spell check, spell check is stupid. Spell check will not correct your spelling because as far as the dictionary is concerned, they are both correct spelling. But you're using the wrong word in the wrong context. In mathematics, we talk about a discontinuous function. A discontinuous function is, fun is a function where it's not obviously continuous. Here's, your, here's, a dis here's a continuous function and here's a discontinuous function. It goes like that. That is a discontinuous function. Well, you shouldn't overlap, but you, can, but you get the idea. Do you understand? To discrete means to be careful, to be prudent in your speech, in your behavior, and so forth. So you may ask somebody to be discreet. That means you're telling them, don't go around flapping your gums. Keep it to yourself. Don't open your mouth. I expect you to be discreet. That was it. That was the end of day number eight. Let's go to day number nine. The very first step it first word that we talked about in day nine, well, uh, day nine was confluence. Confluence means coming together, merging. And literally it means coming together of two bodies of, uh, two bodies of water. Here's a stream, here's another stream, and they come together. This, co this process of coming together is called confluence, where two, two streams come together. That's the literal meaning of the word. Metaphorically, it simply means you can have confluence of ideas, you can have confluence of confluence of notions, you can have confluence of uh, uh, themes, and that's all coming together. Here's a situation where you're going on a street, just the opposite of this situation, where they're coming together. Here they're merging together, but here I'm driving on the street, and all of a sudden the street breaks up into two parts, and right, two separate streets. What do we call a situation like that? Americans tend to describe this as a fork in the road. I do not know why, but that situation is what is known as a bifurcation. To bifurcate means to break into two parts, to break into two branches. This is a review, which is why I'm going very fast. In the actual video, I go slowly. I give synonyms. We talk about synonyms sometimes, antonyms. We also talk about pronunciation. I actually put down the pronunciation of every single word. I'm not doing any of that here. Do you understand? If it were to break it up into three parts, a situation like this would be described as a trifurcation. To trifurcate means to branch out into three parts. Bifurcation, trifurcation. The next we talked about, the next word that we talked about was Abeyance. What does it mean to put something in abeyance? To 
put something in, in advance, again I'm not going to write everything down because to save time. To put something in advance means to put something off. To put something off. To put something off. To delay. To postpone. So if, if you're talking to somebody about one topic and all of a sudden you want to introduce another topic, that person might say, let's leave this in abeyance. We're dealing with this right now. Let's take care of this topic first. Let's take care of this matter first. We'll leave the other matter in abeyance. To leave something, to put something in abeyance means to postpone it, to delay it. We'll deal with it later. It means actually to put something in, in the state of inactivity. Finally, we talked about this word. On day 9, the last word was euphemism. Euphemism means to employ a good sounding word or expression to, in, uh, to replace in lieu of. It's a very simple word, but I just want to make sure that I do not end up making a fool of myself. In lieu of, in place of. We'll learn this word later on. In lieu of or in place of a word that might be considered offensive or unpleasant. So again, one more time, to replace an unpleasant sounding word or expression or, or, or a word or expression that has come to mean, come to have a connotation of offense, an offensive term, with something that is less offensive, it is called euphemism. In a colloquial sense, in a colloquial term, it means to be, to be, it's right here, to be, political, politically correct. To be politically correct means to employ euphemism. Nobody's blind these days. The blind people are these days referred as visually impaired. Nobody is handicapped. They are physically challenged. Nobody is retarded. They are mentally challenged. Uh, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Uh, there are no, there are no black people anymore. They are either African American or people of color, uh, and so forth. Do you understand? When I was covering, when I was covering this word on day night, I was, I was being facetious. Oh, here's a good word, facetious. We'll put that on the list too, so that we can cover it in the future. But how do you spell it? I know it has a, in the beginning, it has F A C E. What does it mean to be facetious? Or should I put it here? F A C E T I O U A. Facetious means to be. to be silly, to be funny when it's not called for. I was being facetious when I said that. Uh, Nobody is fat these days, people are just pleasantly plump. Nobody is uh, short, they are just vertically challenged. You get the idea. That was the end of day number nine. On day 10, we talked about contrived. It means to make something up artificially. To contrive something requires ingenuity. It requires it requires one to be ingenious, to be clever. Ingenuity is a noun for ingenious. So if you're describing a story with an uh, improbable uh, chain of events, uh, an improbable concatenation, That was the next word we learned. Concatenate means to link a link bunch of things in a chain or series. It's called, uh, if, you, if you're describing a story with the improbable uh, concatenation of events, you're being creative. That story is contrived, it's made up, it, it is artificial. It requires ingenuity. Don't confuse this word with ingenuous, which means not to be sophisticated. An ingenuous person is somebody who is not very sophisticated, not very refined, not very worldly, 
it also means to be frank, to be, to be honest, to be candid. Candid was the last word we covered, which means to be open, honest, frank. So ingenuous person is almost like a child. It has a nuance of the, the, here, a person is being ingenuous. They're being open, they're being frank, they're being straightforward, they're being honest. Uh, because, because, because it has a nuance of being not too worldly, not too sophisticated, almost childlike. That's it. That's what this candid is. Candid means open and honest and frank. That was the end of it. That was the end of our day 10. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, face-to-face -face tutoring, or tutoring over the Skype, uh, over the internet via Skype, or, or the telephone for any of these tests, GRE, GMAT, or SAT, or TOEFL, go to any, any of these websites, give me a, send me an email, and we'll talk about it, okay? Or you can go to kashwaniprep.com, and you can send me an email from there. And I'll be more than happy to help you. All right? Thanks.